I'm done. I am not going to the country club and tell my friends at the golfing tournament that my girlfriend is pregnant with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm out, I'm just out, I'm just out. Whenever God does something you don't understand, you have a tendency to want to back out. But the real truth of the matter is life is designed to, to try your staying power. This is the potter's touch. This is the Christmas season, there's no doubt about that. But the first Christmas was not filled with shopping malls and shopping carts and long lines and coupons and getting on the internet. It was filled with trouble and, and tests and trials and and I want to ask you, whether you're celebrating or frustrated, can God trust you with trouble? Take a look at this. I almost entitled this, this message Mother Wit because, because I now realize that Mother Wit is the remaining nectar of truth that has survived through the struggles of life. Its essence and aroma permeates the soul of the student and stays with you even after your mother is gone because her wisdom is the nectar and the composite of what she learned through the adversity and the vicissitudes of life. You can't have mother wit at 15. You can't have mother wit at 20. You can't have mother wit at 30. You can't have mother wit at 35. Mother wit is what is left, what, what worked out of what you tried, your conclusion, what, what, you, what you come up with. And, and I almost call this, this mother wit. So my wife, my wife taught me a lesson. She didn't even know it. She was, uh, she, she, one of the problems that led to her surgery, she had a herniated a disc in two different locations and the herniation had pressed against the nerve and her left arm and hand were not working properly and she had lost all feeling and sensation in, in her extremity. She could, she could move it a little bit, but she couldn't feel anything when she touched it and she had problems moving it. It was a real problem. So we were praying about it. She went in, she had the surgery. All the kids come. We, we have the kind of family that when one of us is in trouble, everybody huddles. Yeah, we all huddle. Yeah, yeah. If, if you jump on one of us right now, it's, it's, you, you really got to be awesome because everybody's going to dive in and ask what happened later because the, it's old school. I know it's out of style. It doesn't happen much now, but it's, we huddle. We huddle. We attack things together. We survive things together. So when my wife came out of surgery, she went in. I prayed for her before she went in surgery. She came out of surgery. She's in the recovery room. She's in their intensive care. The, the anesthesiologist has just walked out. She's now coming out from under anesthesia. And she came out praising God. She came out thanking God. She came out glorifying God. And once she had gotten herself together and, and she and I had spent a few moments together, all the kids came around the bed. So all the kids and me are around the bed. And, and this was one of the life lessons I will never forget. I really cannot articulate it like, like she did it. All the children around the bed and I'm around the bed and my wife is weeping and she's just thanking God that she's come through the surgery okay. And the children all gathered around the bed and she reached out and she started touching them just on the hand and in the face. She said, she said, she was just touching them, just touching all over them. And she, she was crying. She said, I can feel my children again. And every now and then we have this moment that I know it's a moment that I'll never forget the rest of my life. It's, it's a teaching moment. It's, it's, it's not the sort of thing that most men would do when, had we regained consciousness. We would appreciate the support of the family and the friend, but my wife took it somewhere else. She was touching all the children and I knew she was remembering uh, touching them before and feeling them in her body in a way she went somewhere I couldn't go and she was crying she said oh she said I can feel my children and and the whole room was in tears 
because it was the kind of communication that requires no speech through the connectivity that pre-existed birth. I can feel my children. Again, and I stepped back because this was a mother moment. You couldn't touch it. It was just, it was just somewhere else. I was just in awe at, at the bond. I, I got my little feel in though, but uh, <laughs> put my face out there too, feel me, you come right here. There are some times that I have a tendency as a man to be insensitive of, of certain things relating to femininity and she'll have to educate me to the significance of a moment. She, you, you know, she said, that's important to a woman because of so and so and so and so and so on. And then she becomes the teacher and I become the student. One of those things is, is the whole notion of, of, of giving birth. <clears throat> and um, wanting to give birth. And the whole process is something that, that I, I see through a glass darkly. I, I have never wanted to be pregnant. <laughs> the idea of something inside me living and kicking makes me sick. I just, I cannot see what would be wonderful about your stomach moving around like the exorcist inside of you. It, it, it's just a God thing, but she, she has to help me with that to understand why that would be wonderful and, and how your body changes and how your attitude changes and how there is a bonding that takes place and, and, and there's a loving that begins before birth. There, there is an excitement there that, 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 that you know, I was there when y'all was born. I was there. I was for you. Hoping you come out all right. I was cheering you on. Listening to Here come another one. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's the machine that lets you know the contractions are coming. And I told everybody we were having a baby. <laughs> you know how we do? We having a baby. But it really wasn't true. She was having the baby. <laughs> I was eating up the hospital food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Expectations are everything. They're just, it's amazing when you, when you have this expectation and, 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 and it's an exciting moment. That's, that's why I chose the Virgin Mary to, to teach today because she, she's having this girl moment and I'm, I'm going to do a guy's rendition of a girl's moment she getting ready to get married. It's girly stuff. Y'all turn into somebody else when you get married. Ugly women look good when they get married. They get a glow. There's an effervescence that comes against them. They start flashing their engagement ring and, 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 and rosebuds pop out on their cheeks and, and stardust gets in their eyes and they're running all over the place. Girl, I'm getting married. She is espoused to Joseph, planning her wedding. <laughs> it's been said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him what you got planned. <laughs> and in the process of planning for this special day with this special person, with your special friends, an interruption occurs. God will interrupt your plans. He doesn't care how much money you spent on it, how long you've dreamed about it, how hard you've worked at it, how you've envisioned it, and you've got everything set up, and then it's gonna be like this, and when I'm 22, and by the time I'm 28, I'm gonna be here, and by 36, I'm gonna be right here, you've got it all framed up how it's gonna go, he'll knock it all over the floor. Angel comes in and says, hell Mary, you've been highly favored amongst women, that's good. That's good, you've been highly favored. That's good news, it's wonderful. I'm favored, I see y'all shining. I got the favor, you know, I the choir was singing a favor, oh, favor. Mm -hmm. Been highly favored. You should bring forth a son. Yeah, I planned that. After we get married, I'm gonna have a child. No, it's not gonna happen when it's convenient. It's gonna happen when it's crazy. I thought you said I was favored. Uh, 
I'm going to be like pregnant. The, the first woman with an unexplainable pregnancy. How? The Bible says she pondered these things in her heart. God says stuff that makes you think. He takes you through things that, that, that you don't talk about. You ponder them in your heart. Why did I come up the way I came up? Why at this stage in my life did I go through what I went through? Why are we re relocating at this season in my life? Why after 20 years am I out of a job? Why did I lose? I, I'm the only one that's ever asked God why. God, God does some things that are confusing. He does some things that are confused. He allows some things that are unexplainable. He disrupts your life in crazy ways. He, he, how could you tell this girl she has favor and when I leave you're going to be pregnant and they're going to be looking at you and you're going to be riding the back of a donkey with no place to stay. Birth your baby in a barn. How is that favor? Still to come on The Potter's Touch. In Christ the Lord is born in a messy relationship by a couple on the run and a pregnant sweating woman gives birth to a holy child, doesn't even have any clothes to wrap around him, takes the milk rags with the sour milk expelled from the cows and wraps the milk of the word in the milk of the cows. What's pulling me down to the mountain when I have an opportunity to go to the top? If you've ever climbed a mountain, you know that reaching the summit requires perseverance, determination, and struggle. In your journey with Christ, He's often pushing you to a new and sometimes uncomfortable place but there's always purpose in the pain. And when you reach the destination that he leads you to, the few is worth it. If he's got the key to me, to who I am, to what I am, and I had no chance of unlocking the door to myself without getting to the key. And he took the key and hid it in his garments and started up the hill and told me, you'll never know if you don't chase me. For helping us reach others with your gift of any size, you'll receive Secret to Elevation on CD. Or when your gift is $200 or more, you'll receive View from the Top on DVD, A Grateful Heart Stationery, and The Woman Thou Art Loosed Bible. Reach the destination that was meant for you today. You know what, Sarah, babe? It's time for Christmas. And yes. the best part of all is giving. God gave His Son and we celebrate his life. I think my favorite part is getting an opportunity to spend time with our friends and family. Certainly there will be many laughs. The love of Jesus is the source from which all love flows. Let that love flow into your life and remember that Jesus is it's the reason, the reason for, for the season. season. God bless you. The oxymorons of life will trip you up. If you're not careful, we have a tendency to process things. This is good. That is bad. This is good. That is bad. This is a good job. That's a bad job. This is a good house. That's a bad house. This is a good person. That is a bad person. As long as you think linearly about life, you will always be confused because life is quite paradoxical. If you meet somebody bad, you'll find out they got good qualities. And if you get around somebody that you think is really good and you hang around them close enough, and it will blow your philosophies away over who's good and who's bad because sometimes the person you thought was bad would help you and the person you thought was good wouldn't. And You, you learn not to be so cynical, so critical, so conclusive, so premature in your understanding to think you know so much. It takes all of your life to figure out life. 
Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Should I be happy or should I cry? I'm confused. We, 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 we celebrate when they come. We cry when they leave. But the Bible says that's backwards. The Bible says we should cry when they come and celebrate when they leave. Have you ever been crying about something you should have been shouting about or shouting about something you should have been crying about and it took you 10 years to realize that the thing that you cried about brought you the most joy and the thing you were excited about brought all kind of hell in your life? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hold your wisdom for a while because wisdom works slow. Don't be so quick to tell everybody what they ought to do because you might not be as smart as you think you are. You may have misdiagnosed a moment. God says you've been highly favored and right after his exodus, she has to go tell Joseph, uh, Honey, um, I'm not going to be able to wear that gown. Uh, <laughs> and now you go into the test that comes before triumph and the frustrations that come before favor. Because her boyfriend says, I'm out. I'm going to walk out quietly. I'm done. I am not going to the country club and tell my friends at the golfing tournament that my girlfriend is pregnant with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm out. I'm just out. I'm just out. Whenever God does something you don't understand, you have a tendency to want to back out. But the real truth of the matter is life is designed to, to try your staying power. <laughs> your staying power. Are you, are you having done all to stand? Can, can, you, can you stand when you don't understand? When favor wears the clothes of frustration adorn with the jewelry of failure and you question in your own mind, if I'm favored, why am I pregnant on the back of a donkey in the hot Palestinian heat, looking for a place to stay to give birth to a holy child who ends up born in a dirty place? And so it was, the Bible says, with the birth of Jesus. It was an oxymoron a holy child born in a horrible place, espoused to a virgin, Joseph is espoused to a virgin who is pregnant by a ghost. And in the midst of planning for the wedding, now we are planning for a divorce and, and now the life has all become discombobulated because it is no longer smooth sailing. It is no longer predictable. It's not black or white, right or wrong, up or down, in or out. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, complicated. If you ever told your life story, <laughs> oh, your mama was a good woman. Yes, she was a great woman, a wonderful woman, wonderful woman. But, but it's complicated. I, I, I had a good childhood, but it was it's, it's complicated. I'm, I'm strong. Yeah, I'm so. Oh, yeah, I'm strong. Yeah, man, I'm strong. You don't fool me. I'm, but what, well, the reason I did that, well, it, well uh, that part right there, uh, well, I'm strong about most stuff, but life is complicated. The Virgin teaches us how to be consistent when life is complicated. How to be steadfast and abounding in the purpose of God while you are confused and pondering in your heart what in the world 
is going on in my life. And, 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 and then, then when I think about it, I think, God, if you're going to bring your son into the world for the first time, why, didn't you, why is he not born in a palace? Escorted by angels in a palatial environment. Why would you choose the opposite? The desolate, the dank, the decrepit, the disturbing. And Christ the Lord is born in a messy relationship by a couple on the run and a pregnant sweating woman gives birth to a holy child doesn't even have any clothes to wrap around him, takes the milk rags with the sour milk expelled from the cows and wraps the milk of the word in the milk of the cows. What you call swaddling clothes were milk rags laying around in a barn and God chose this method to make his entrance. And, and you see, you, you can have favor, but that doesn't mean you don't have fear. You can have all the favor you want to, but you're going to have some frustration. <laughs> don't you sit there for one moment with your pretty self acting like your life was a straight line of unchallenged successes how, how dare you sit there beside your, your little sweet muffin and act like you were always right. <laughs> I'm right and he's wrong. It's amazing counseling couples. They come in your office and they've already decided who's right and who's wrong. So they, they have predetermined scripts not knowing that everybody thinks they're right. And when you really begin to unravel it, both of them are a little bit right and a little bit wrong. And such is life. It's, 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 it's this complicated situation. And, and, the, and, and the Virgin Mary teaches us that you can be, you can have a visitation from an angel and still ride on a donkey. that the Holy Ghost can come upon you and you can still have no place to stay. That that, that, with, that, that which is within you can be conceived by the Holy Ghost and that that is around you can be demonic and angry and ready to give up and walk out the door. And your job, should you choose to accept it, is to survive it all. I'll be back to you in just a moment. Learn to be an overcomer with Bishop's latest message, Can God Trust You With Trouble? Whatever is going on in your life right now that you might take a moment and think, maybe God chose me for this assignment because he knew that a lesser man would have caved that a weaker woman would have walked away, that a more childish individual would have thrown in the towel, and yes, I got mad, and yes, I cried, and yes, I was frustrated, but I kept on swinging my back. Order your copy of this dynamic message on CD or DVD. When you write to us, visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. What's pulling me down to the mountain? when I have an opportunity to go to the top. If you've ever climbed a mountain, you know that reaching the summit requires perseverance, determination, and struggle. In your journey with Christ, He's often pushing you to a new and sometimes uncomfortable place, but there's always purpose in the pain. And when you reach the destination that He leads you to, the few is worth it. If He's got the key to me, to who I am, to what I am, and I had no chance of unlocking the door to myself without getting to the key. And He took the key and hid it in His garments and started up the hill and told me, you'll never know if you don't chase me. 
For helping us reach others with your gift of any size, you'll receive Secret to Elevation on CD. Or when your gift is $200 or more, you'll receive View from the Top on DVD, A Grateful Heart Stationery, and The Woman Thou Art Loosed Bible. Reach the destination that was meant for you today. I tell you right now, it does not matter where you start, it matters where you finish. You're getting practical information from leaders that have been proven and been through there and done that and overcame and been victorious. I shudder to think how many conferences would have to take place to reach this many leaders at one time. We came here to get a deeper understanding of how we can take the vision that God has given you and take it to the next level. It refocused my, my thought process, my hearing, my ability to see the word much differently. Let's begin to think beyond just our tradition and our mindset. Challenging us on a whole new level. I'm loving the cross-pollinization. I'm loving the out-the-box thinking. My hands were hanging down. Get up close with T.D. Jakes Ministries at tdjakes.org. Connect with us anywhere at any time. If you haven't been hanging out with us on social media, you've been missing it. I'm there for you ministering, sharing the Word of God, encouraging you, and sometimes answering you, yes, it's me, personally. Come on over to social media, hang out with me. I've got something for you that will really bless your life. Talk to us on Facebook, tweet us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Connect with us today. The anointing of God is on you. Because God trusts you. He trusted you with your life. Don't you divorce that thing, Joseph. He trusted you, as complicated as it is, that you would learn how to be consistent in spite of complications. He knew when he trusted you that you were going to need him. He knew it, but he's been waiting on you to know it. He gave you an assignment that was too big to do by yourself, that sooner or later you would humble yourself and say, God, I can't take it without you. I can't make it without you. I can't do it without you. We're out of time, we've got to stop there, but it's been a real joy and a real opportunity to share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ with you. I want you to keep your sanity during this season, to be calm in your spirit, to possess what Christ came to give us, that perfect peace that passes all understanding. Know that we love you with the love of the Lord and that we are praying for you and that God's best is his gift to you. Happy holidays.